Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Lips. Today with a kind of combination issue of the M Show, what every maker should have one of, namely a thermometer for solar ions. And at the same time, we'll do a tear down and a kind of a comparison, not a shootout. So first of all, the reason oh, why should you have a solar tip or solar ion thermometer well you cannot rely on the uh, display of your solar station if it has a display at all i've made two videos about an Eton solar station that we're using here where due to well let's say engineering errors the display temperature is uh, between 50 and 100 degrees celsius out of what it should be or out of the the measured temperature i've compared this here with a with a thermocouple uh, thermometer or to be honest with two different ones to be absolutely sure and that teached me that a few years ago when i bought here this one as a kit from elv uh, that was the, the right decision but at home i do have an, an ERSA or ERSA solder station which gave exactly the same displayed uh, or dialed in temperature as the measured temperature but here with the Eton stations we had very large differences and uh, so we will compare these three models a standard thermocouple thermometer you can see it's uh, summer here in Germany <laughs> indoors at night 27 degrees then this was uh, sold sold as a kit from elv relatively nicely built and the first specialized on-purpose solar tip thermometer that i ever saw and recently i recognized this one here this ch cheap chinese one from ebay and you might see they have one thing in common except for the display um, excuse me for the bad readability, it depends on the angle here. The ELV1 uh, looks in fact much clearer and cleaner. And the Chinese one here also has much more contrast if I tilt it a little bit. So, but uh, you might have recognized the thermocouple here with the little red and blue markings just to co connect it the right way. And uh, there's one thing you should know, these things were out. The thermocouples don't last very long. Uh, I've had this problem here after about a year with, this, with the ELV kit and uh, it just didn't display the, the temperature uh, anymore. It is designed just if you uh, touch it with your solar tip or if the thermocouple becomes hotter than, I don't know, 50 degrees Celsius or so, then it switches over to displaying not the internal temperature. But we will see, as far, last time I checked, the thermocouple again was out of, uh, well, it wasn't working anymore. You can see it here. I've, I've set the solar station to 350 degrees and it cannot be true that it's only 135. So uh, it's nice that the Chinese, they give you five thermocouples. So you already have four spare parts. And we will later uh, try to replace the broken one here, which obviously doesn't work anymore, with one of the Chinese one and see if it's working again. But now, f one thing before you measure, your solder tip should be clean of any solder. Otherwise, the lifetime of, your, of the thermocouple is w when there is solder or flux residue. And if you put this onto the thermocouple, the lifetime will be greatly reduced. So clean your solder tip as good as possible before measuring. So let's start as a comparison value with, um, with the uh, separate thermocouple thermometer. I've set the, I just have to find the right spot. I've set the solder station to 350 degrees and we'll try to find the, the hottest 
point of the solder tip. This is of course not quite easy because the thermocouple here is like a little pill or a little ball and does not have a flat surface. So that's why the specialized solder tip thermometers are better because the sensor element has a flat surface. Okay, there is a, it's a little bit hotter. It was 300, nearly 330. So let's, let's say 330 was the hottest point. And now let's compare this with the Chinese FG100. And we're getting nearer. So 300, it's nearly the same. So 330. And I think this is even more correct than what we just me measured with the separate thermocouple thermometer because we now really um, are touching a wider uh, or bigger surface area and so the contact area is simply bigger because we, we are pressing the uh, with the chisel tip um, a more a flat surface against a flat surface so but let's say 330 was we can still try the other side the solar tip, see if there's any difference. But 330 was nearly exactly the same value and I think we're getting there. You cannot expect a, a precision of one degree Celsius or so. Let's say if it's 10 or 15 degrees. So you can see the other side is even now, depending on how, how I'm holding it, we're getting also again nearly to 330. So let's round this up to 330. So basically the thermocouple and the specialized solar tip thermometer gave the same value. So the precision is uh, okay, I would say. And this is much better suited because of the replaceable uh, and flat thermocouples and this doesn't cost uh, top dollars it's really cheap and a nice way to check your solder tip or your, the temperature of your solder iron so let's still make a second measurement at the lower end of the, of the temperature range uh, I've set the solder station now to 200 degrees Celsius and you always have to wait when you change the temperature until the control loop has stabilized and the, the temperature of your solder tip has reached a constant or relatively constant temperature. And yes, now we're even above. So we are now 40 degrees out. So that's way too much. Um, so that if you do any work where you need relative precisely 200 degrees and you are now at 240 that would give a could give a bad surprise of course the usual soldering is not done at 240 degrees there especially a lead free solder just wouldn't melt um, but again the Etten solder station really is quite out of not out of range, but out of precision here. F nearly 40 degrees out. Now that's way too much. Let's try the other side of the solder iron. Yes, we're getting again up to nearly 240. And let's try if we can verify this again with the separate thermocouple thermometer and yes we're getting 240 
So, same result even above now. But we can see here uh, both thermometers gave uh, the same value, plus, mina, minus, well, let's say, 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. So, it's the, the, the solar station that gives the wrong temperature. Dialed in are 200 degrees Celsius and the true temperature is 240. And, uh, well, bad surprise, but I knew that uh, this Aten solar station gives wrong temperatures. So well, it was no surprise for me. Uh, now, finally, let's uh, take this thing apart and let's see if we can repair the ELV uh, one, which I know also was quite exact when the sensor was still working. So let's see how easy this comes apart. I have the original 9 volt certainly not alkaline or is it super heavy duty battery battery let's quickly dispose this because they are known notoriously known to become leaky after some time so put in a call ah, by the way what I forgot you to show um, to replace the sensor you have a little knob on the side which moves um, the center um, pin here inward so you can easily put first the two um, uh, the two outer uh, contacts into the outer pins and then uh, put the the center pin or the the loop here the little wire loop into the center pin so that's a nice idea at the uh, ELV thing, they are uh, two ends are soldered, and one is put with a little spring here, which is which is not a good idea because the original spring, of course, immediately got lost. So I had to find one which could replace uh, the original spring. So this is much much better. And now let's see how easy this thing comes apart. Two Phillips set screws. No, there's a third one above the battery. Don't complain that the screwdriver is not the right size. I know, but it works for this purpose. And, oops, the, the knob mechanism here. Is okay, it's also spring loaded, so we'll see how to get it back. So there's a single phenolic based PCB which probably has, except for a microcontroller, probably only an op amp because that's what's uh, how the people at ELV did it. You just need an op amp to amplify the very low thermal voltages for, let's say, 100 times in that range, and then you go, go dire directly into the ADC of your microcontroller. And let's see what we get. Okay, we have a what is it called? Chip on board, COB. So the, the microcontroller, uh, which obviously is one which can directly drive the LCD, is below the blob. And Q1, we have a transistor. U1, that's a voltage regulator, of course, to get the 9 volts from the battery linearly regulated down. But I can't find the op amp that I was expecting. There's even space for a for a little trim pot here that is not populated, perhaps for a fine adjustment, or you you always can do adjustments in software of course. And we have solder jumpers. But 
obviously this is a very special uh, microcontroller with probably an integrated op-amp because the, the thermal voltages here from the red and the black wire they are so low and they are going here only two resistors, a few decoupling capacitors and then the thermal voltage goes directly here in, below the blob so either they, they have also an additional op-amp below under the blob or um, there's a microcontroller that can really uh, handle extremely low voltages with an inbuilt amplifier could be the case but again quite interesting how few parts the Chinese need to make a perfectly working nice little addition to your lab so sorry not much to see uh, here let's assemble reassemble it back and see if it works again so it took me nearly an hour to put the spring mechanism here back again <laughs> into place I don't know how the Chinese are doing it uh, anyway uh, in the meantime I've also exchanged the broken temperature sensor here in the ELV kit and I've put out another comparison uh, most multimeters today come with uh, a temperature probe with a thermocouple like this one here and now let's make a final comparison if the ELV thing works again uh, and let's check all three one after another I've set the the solar station back again at 350 degrees Celsius let's see where we are getting here uh, you see it's again totally out of control it looks like or totally out of adjustment it looks like depending on uh, how you, how you switch it on it always comes with a different temperature it should have stabilized at 350 but we are at 275 let's compare this with the ELV kit just not easy to hold it here at an angle in the camera so we're also coming at 275 so the same result 280 let's compare again what I like with this one is the the spring is really um, quite firm so that it doesn't uh, it gives you enough tactile feedback just that you can press the solder tip enough so 280 okay so they are nearly equal which comes as no surprise if you have the same sensor and now with the thermocouple probe on the multimeter we're also reaching at 280 something yeah because this also is like a little pill it's difficult to get a good contact but now I think I have it around 280 and so all three give nearly the same result and what is the temperature set at at this freaking Atom 80, 80D uh, it's a set at 350 so 70 degrees Celsius out of uh, adjustment unbelievable that's why you should have at least one of these this one is uh, of course the cheapest uh, and the good thing is really the, the replaceable um, thermocouple probes and there you get a set of five delivered I think this uh, the main result here or the main ver verdict is you should have at least one way to measure your 
uh, the temperature at your of your solar tip because there can be a large variation, a large difference between set value and true value. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs. See you next time.